One of the most popular reactions from people when they see my Tesla is they usually ask, does it really drive itself? Because many people associate Teslas with self-driving and more specifically Tesla's autopilot feature, which is an advanced driver assistance system. Now, autopilot is synonymous with Tesla, but not many people realize that other non-Tesla cars can also have their own advanced driver assistance system added at a fairly affordable price. It's called Open Pilot, but how well does it stack up against standards that Tesla Autopilot has set? Let's find out. Now, Logan Legrand is a local motorsports photographer here in my city of Louisville, Kentucky. He reached out to me one day and said he would like to meet up and compare the Autopilot on my Model 3 against the open source Open Pilot that he has installed on his 2019 Toyota Corolla. And I thought it was a great idea, so we tested them out in a few different scenarios driving around town. But before we get into the comparison test, let's briefly go over each system. Now, according to Tesla, Autopilot is designed to assist the driver with safety and convenience features such as emergency braking, collision warning, and blind spot monitoring. Autopilot enables the car to steer, accelerate, and brake automatically for other vehicles and pedestrians within its lane. As of November 2019, when we recorded these tests, Autopilot is included on all Tesla vehicles at no additional cost. However, when I bought my Model 3 in early 2018, it was not included. I actually paid $5,000 for what they called Enhanced Autopilot at the time. Then I spent another $2,000 for the full self-driving option, which provides some more advanced features such as automatic driving from highway on-ramp to off-ramp, including interchanges and overtaking slow cars, automatic lane changes while driving on the highway, auto park for parallel and perpendicular spaces, and summon which allows your Tesla to drive itself to your location in a parking lot. So what is Open Pilot? Well, like the name suggests, it's an open source driver assistance system by the startup company Comma AI. It operates as a replacement for OEM advanced driver assistance systems and allows users to modify their existing car with continuously updated driver assistance features that improve with user submitted data. Now, currently, OpenPilot performs the functions of adaptive cruise control, automated lane centering, forward collision warning, and lane departure warning for a growing variety of supported vehicles. If your car is one of the 50 or so compatible vehicles, it costs about $1,000 to order the hardware called the Eon Dev Kit, which is sort of a glorified Android phone running dash cam software. Now, once you get the hardware, you can install OpenPilot on it, then connect it to your car and you're ready to go. Here are some of the common similarities of Autopilot and OpenPilot. Both are level two partial automation. Both systems receive free software updates that constantly improve the existing features along with adding new ones. Finally, both are constantly improving their own systems by tracking all users driving data for machine learning. Also, since OpenPilot is open source software, there are some slight differences in how it operates between different vehicle makes and models. And everything we reference in this video is how it operates specifically on the 2019 Toyota Corolla hatchback. Jumping into our test, there were five main scenarios we wanted to compare to see how well each system did. Normal city driving, interstate driving, near traffic and street parking, unmarked lanes, and strong curves. Today's sponsor is Prizio, who just got done working with Paul Rudd to give away a Tesla. And guess what? They're doing it again. Yes, you could be a lucky winner of a brand new 2020 long range all wheel drive Tesla Model 3. If you want a chance to win this amazing car, plus $5,000 in the trunk, all you have to do is make a $10 or more donation to a great cause at prizio.com slash Tesla. And the bigger donation you give, the better chances you have to win. As you'll see in this video, the Model 3 has cutting edge technology and is in insanely fun to drive so don't miss out because this giveaway is ending soon visit the link in the description below or go to prizeo.com tesla to enter for a chance to win so this is inside uh logan's toyota corolla hatchback i think this is going to be kind of just city driving yeah normal stop and go multi-lane and we we go down and and drive on a few multi-lane roads and just kind of deal with normal stop and go moderate traffic this is the open open pilot device and go ahead and explain it when it's enabled there's a green line around yeah it. there's a green border when it's enabled and when you enable it um, you do it with the normal cruise control buttons and when you disable it you disable on gas or brake or the cancel cruise control button set speed with the cruise plus or minus so you see me with my hand on there i'm hitting uh, set and probably adjusting the speed whenever you see logan's hands not on the wheel that means it's enabled with mine this is my model 3 and anytime you see this blue icon right here when that is blue that means autopilot is currently in control of the car when it's gray when it pops up that means autopilot is available the big difference between open pilot 
in autopilot, you can see my hand is on the steering wheel because it's required. Even though autopilot's enabled, your hand is yes. not on the steering wheel. And I should point out that the uh, device there in the windshield has a driver-facing camera, and it has a little indicator there in the bottom left that is uh, showing that it sees your face, and it's actually tracking your eye and head position. That's a huge difference between both. There's a bus up here on the right. And it starts to move into my lane. Watch, watch how Open Pilot handles this bus on the, on the right. Like you, you see you, me you, make a hand move. Yeah, because I was he, ready. He's ready yeah. to take over. You can see where. No, you can watch. Watch it. It was so close. Like yeah, uh, it never you, crossed the lane line. So as far as open pilot's concerned, there's nothing in its lane. It tries to predict cut-ins. So it'll, if it sees a vehicle starting to cross, it'll try to predict that early to slow down. It's not going to move over in lane for an object like that. Yeah, so here it is. I'm behind now. Here's a view from my car. You're in front of me, and this is the bus again. Look, it's on the line. This is where I thought autopilot. I, I thought autopilot was not was going to break. Yeah, it, it saw this. So if you it look detected, at the, it, yeah, it shows it very the, the Model Three screen right here. You can see it's. I mean, it detects the bus. Yeah, it detects the lane line, and as I go by, you, you can it. see the little red the red icon saying, "Oh, you are very close." And some of the sensors saw the bus, and it was right. like, "You're really you're really close," but it did not do anything else yeah. besides that. Yeah, they basically handled it exactly the same. Yeah. Did autopilot try to take that turn lane or widen right here? If you go back right there. Uh, yeah, so it does give way. Uh, autopilot. So are you actually have to. No, no. It, 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 it recognizes. Yeah, because autopilot will disengage on any steering. That's actually autopilot. Look at my view because open Let's pilot does something very similar where it'll start to move over and then it'll realize that it's a split it's not like a widening lane it's a it's a split and it'll recorrect itself the lane is widening so it, it does it it, yeah. it does it, it seems like maybe a little better but you see it like start to move over and correct back into its lane what was your following distance set at here i believe i set mine to two car lengths and so open pilots automatically what three seconds? three seconds on the interstate if you're going like 75 80 it's almost too much because it really stays far back from the cars in front of you and people end up cutting in a lot but they they do that because they limit the braking the firmware is limited by the car so the braking can't be as forceful as maybe in tesla where they, their stack is from the ground up where they can control it all the way through right and then here's we're coming up on an interesting this car is, oh, yeah. is merging and about to come in your lane and you're yeah, and, and I don't take over. You'll see it transfer over right there. Right there. It detects that car as it's about halfway in the lane. Okay. And it starts braking for the, that car. It's using computer vision to detect the cars first over radar. So it's actually using the machine learning model to try to detect the car coming into your lane. That was all, you know, automated yep. by the system. You never and took over. Both cars have been under control. Autopilot and yep. autopilot have controlled these cars throughout this whole entire process. They basically, we don't have any issues. Open Pilot doesn't use any road sign detection or even map-based GPS speeds, so it's all just your manual uh, speed adjustment. So yeah, here we're driving into a little bit of a low sun. Driving into the sun, I've, I've driven it into the sun before, and, and, and Autopilot has been enabled, and it has falsely alerted me that I was about to run a red light, and it was green. Driving into the sun does affect these cameras. You can see there's the seams on the road there. In our yeah, right here, our wonderful roads in <laughs> Kentucky. Uh, so here's the main line. That's the yeah. main divider line. But here you can see, I mean, in the sun, for to a camera, it's hard to distinguish those two. So I think there's a point. See here, it's moving here, over. It's, it's, it's definitely it's compensating, moving over. and now it's moving back to the left a little bit. I think there's a point that I do take over. About right over. here is when it starts favoring the right hand side. And you can see that's brighter looking yeah. than the actual lane. So it's yeah, kind of overpowering the yeah. the camera there. So you can see it's kind yeah. of favoring the right because the sun is... It just, thinks it's in a yeah. narrow lane there. It thinks those ceiling lines are kind of the, the lane markings. And autopilot is not being affected at all. Even by my car tracking off to one side, it, it seems to ignore it completely and stay in lane. Yeah, it seems to be doing a little bit better with knowing which line is which. Are you trying to do an auto lane change? Yeah, so I, I initiated the lane change <laughs> and autopilot should have taken it. So it's alerting me right here it's saying there's a curb there and it can't yeah. turn so it's it's waiting it's still waiting and then by that time i was i was like yeah i'm just gonna un manually i'm just gonna overtake it open pilot is actually taking this curve i think right yeah i'm probably like helping it a little oh, that's bit that's right because you can turn your i keep on forgetting that's yeah. hard to yeah so you can, I can turn your wheel without I can help it out a little so and you see it actually crossed the lane line a little bit so i'm correcting it i enabled autopilot right 
here. Like once it starts recognizing those lane lines yeah. right there, let's just look at your car and see, this is a strong left curve. Just to, to clarify for anyone who, who isn't familiar with open pilot, it only has one forward facing camera. So especially in tighter corners, it's using the machine learning to predict the path and it may lose sight of like that inside lane line temporarily because it's such a tight corner. It's actually out of the model's field of view. I left autopilot enabled and autopilot took, took it fine. Took it pretty well, yeah. Now we're moving into the, yeah, the next test, which is laneless unmarked lines. So you put it on right there and so autopilot yeah. is not even available. So you technically open pilot was available right here when autopilot's not. I said open pilot, you could be in a grass field technically and enable it. It will do its best to try to do path prediction, but obviously these are level two systems. So as far as they're concerned, you're in control of the vehicle. If you want to enable it, it doesn't need lane lines to be enabled. Okay, so here we're at this road with like hardly any lane line markings. There's a little bit, there's some. There's, there's straight markings, but then they end yeah. here at the turn. So the turn, there's nothing besides the road and the grass to really indicate that there's a turn there at all. And so it, it does a pretty good job of even staying in its kind of own lane. Also, this road has potholes. And like, there's shadows. Uh, and then like the grass almost looks the same color as the pavement. Yeah. Like, so that was really, really impressive because it, it did. Yeah, it's it actually really using well. ground truth and predicting a path using the environment. And then so here's me and my Model 3, and you can see like barely the lane lines up there. Let's just take a look at the screen. Autopilot's not even available right now. Not available at all. And I can see, I, I can see physically like where the lane lines are right here. Yeah. But autopilot cannot. I mean, it will not let me enable autopilot. It's not even available. It doesn't even give me the option. No option whatsoever. So here I'm on the other side, going the opposite way. And the lane mark is a little bit clearer on this side, going back this way. So here, that's when it was finally available. So I turn it on and I just lower my speed limit, and it's controlling it. Here is where. Now it like starts to and say, hey, take over, take over. So it's it where the lane lines end, basically. It yeah, where the lane lines end. And it was probably my fault because I should have had a hand on the wheel. If you don't have your hand on the wheel when it's making a turn, it's super quick to alert you and like right. say, take over, take over. And then this is you following me on the same road. Which I kind of wanted to see how it would react to following you. And this is the time it actually has an issue. Yeah. Which I don't think it has necessarily anything to do with following your car. See, your car goes out of vision right there. It doesn't even see it. But here, it, here. it yep. loses the road, which is basically the road's out of the view of the model to where it's seeing more grass than actual pavement at that point. Yeah. And you can see the the path up there actually start getting confused and start defaulting to straight right, like there. right there. And then it starts to correct, but by the time it starts to correct, see there it yep. moves back. But then now it sees so much grass because what you're seeing in the screen there is basically what it sees. Like, especially with Open Pilot, it just has one camera. So I think Open Pilot did honestly better than autopilot because just because autopilot wasn't even available on that right. road and yeah. it's not an official feature to drive laneless but i've tested it in a several situations and it actually can tell the difference between the road and the grass and especially when it's good lighting and it's very clear but now i am going to lead i'm leading now and we're going to go head back on the freeway it's yep. going to be the interstate test Assisted lane change is a feature that's coming pretty soon. It's already technically in the code. You still just have to nudge the wheel. That's kind of like your indication that you're ready to initiate the lane change. Just give it like a slight wheel touch and it'll actually change lanes that's automatically. Good. I actually Please. got a uh, an alert for it to not, I wasn't paying attention, which is oh. kind of funny. Oh, right there, right I saw there. the red one. So you see Yeah, I'm actually looking down. It'll start beeping. So yeah, I put my head back up and it and goes once green. You put your head as back soon up, as you put your head back up and look forward, it goes back. That's to, awesome. To, On autopilot, you know, it limits your speed. If you're on a back road like this, 45 miles an hour, you can't go faster oh, than you, 50. You can't set it faster. And the speed limit sign, like where you can see right there, it's limited to 40. And as soon as it changed to 45, then I was able to go up, increase it to yeah 50. So you can see the speed limit sign right there. Yeah. To, on interstates, okay. I've never had a problem. Right. Because they don't really limit your speed on interstates. If, it, if it's a 65 or above, they don't limit your speed. Using these systems, you're more aware of like the traffic lights and things because you're not having to do this remedial task of just keeping your car centered in a lane. You can just look further ahead on the road. You can use your peripheral to make sure you're still in your lane yep. and you're not actually having to manage that task. It allows you to, to be more aware of the other cars around you. Um, so I think it, it makes you a, a more attentive driver I'm merging onto the freeway right here. I enable autopilot right there. 
I initiate the lane change. Autopilot does the lane change by itself. I initiate the other, the next lane change to merge into traffic. You know, it's still autopilot's completely in control. It finds the spot to merge. It merges by itself. So now this is navigate on autopilot. This is one of the features of full self driving. This is where the navigation comes into play, where it'll actually you know take you to the to yeah. the exit. So it knows what exit it's going to take. You know, it pops up on the screen saying, "Oh, your exit's coming up soon." Sometimes I'll I'll speed up myself because you can accelerate on autopilot. Right. And it won't dis- it disengage. So I left it. And just to see what it would do. And it slowed down. It's slowing down considerably just to get behind this truck. And it makes the merge, which is really cool. I mean, I was yeah. pretty impressed by this. Autopilot knew like which exit to take. It's actually the next exit. And yeah. you can see where I, I, I kind of freak out because I'm like, no, this is the, I, I thought this was the exit I needed to take. Yeah. I was like, oh, autopilot is screwed up. I got to hurry up and get over. No. So I took over thinking that that's the exit. I didn't, well, nope, that's not right. So I screwed that up. So now I'm back in autopilot right here. And I think from here, you know, once I'm the autopilot's enabled, it may, it does the lane change itself, wow. gets on the exit. That's all autopilot right there. I was spending a lot of the time trying to catch back up to you because I wanted to be behind you, but the traffic's it's at the point where it's all fast and it's hard to to uh, get through. And here's kind of one of the the minor complaints about Open Pilot, especially if you're trying to follow somebody is if i enable it right here it would just it would make me fall so back so far back from the car lead car like it doesn't want to uh follow that close and other people would just take over. people would just overtake me and get back in front of me and so that's why i kind of don't enable it here because we're in such traffic and now you're enabled right there once you get behind me yeah once i get behind you um, you kind of just so you just mainly took over like the the congested part just to get behind me and then now you now, now you put it in auto, open pilot and, and see how much of a gap it's actually giving. I mean that's enough for for plenty, anybody to anybody two to, cars could to, just to like this guy right here, which he, I think yeah he, people do eventually look, get into it. Here we go, and I'm like, there's, oh, yep, that's three cars right cars. there that just took. <laughs> They're limited by factory firmware, and they want it to be as universal as possible. So over Toyota, Hyundai, Lexus, Chrysler, Honda, Acuras, they want the braking to be the same. So it's kind of like the lowest common denominator of all of these firmwares built into all these different car manufacturers. And if one of them is only three meters per second of braking force, then you cut them all to that, you know, because that's going to give you a consistent, you know, system across all makes and models. That's just a case where Tesla, where Tesla is kind of more or more aggressive, I should say, with their following, because you can change right. it to one car length. You can change it from one to four car lengths at any time. With Open Pilot, that's where it's 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 basically limited to three seconds, no matter what. Obviously, there's slight downsides to it, but at the end of the day, you kind of get used to the following distance. And if you're not in rush hour, like this traffic's probably about the worst type of traffic. If you're in heavy traffic, it's fine because everybody's going slow. Everybody's going, yeah. And if you're in light traffic, it's fine because you're not having people cutting in and around you all the time. So it's just when it's moderate traffic and there's a lot of people, but traffic's at a high speed to where people are maneuvering in and out a lot. But if you weren't following me, if you were just driving normally, you probably would have I would have had it enabled and I had been, yeah, cruising in the been, slow lane right. and, you know, relaxing. I think I do turn it on right here. I, I can't, I think I have to take over mainly because it's speed control is not very sophisticated right now for stuff like this. Like so you it's see, going too slow for your Yeah, it, it's slowing down too much. See, okay. I'm going like 25, 25. and you're on autopilot going. Yeah, we'll, we'll look at my car here in just a second. But going fine. And then I kind of got to the point where I was like, okay, it can handle the turn, but the, the speed is not there yet. Like they had their goal this year is to work on longitudinal and actually do a model base, use machine learning to uh, do more speed adjustment. I got it set to 35 miles an hour. It's going 30. So it's it's slowing. It's going slower than what I have it set. So it's being cautious as well, but it's just being a little it's going a little bit faster than right. than what Open Pilot was go, was going. So I and mean, it, and it's and only going 31, so it's not going no. that much faster, but you know, Autopilot still enabled. Autopilot took the curve uh, and then accelerates. So here I I you scrolled the scroll wheel up. to increase the 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 speed limit and it didn't make the the lane change right here. So it says changing lanes to follow route. So, you know, it's using my, the navigate on autopilot, but it, it might've been a map thing where it knew that the lanes merged into one here. So it just, yeah, that was, it was interesting. And it would have stayed in this lane, but like it kind of worked out. Cause when I, when I initiated this lane change right here, it actually 
went into the fast lane. The fast lane. So it kind of merged almost two lanes almost. Yeah. But it was it's been it was in control the whole time. Right. Yeah, here's a I think that's kind of one of the the glitches it had. Crosses the center lane almost. The lane line here jumps over and it's uh that was actually a glitch in the model that was a pretty well-known issue on this build, which I think this was 6.6, .6, and now we're on 7.0. It got trained out of it in the next, they did a full rebuild of the model. That's the best thing is that it's just, the more more gets used, the better it gets. Yeah. They're in control without any any need to take over. I pretty much this whole road, is, here's where we're approaching the traffic jam. No need to take over. I mean, it breaks, just keeps the distance. That's one of the best things with autopilot, like especially open, and open pilot as Both. well. Yeah, this is where you're you really want it. Bumper to bumper traffic, you just leave it on, and you don't have to worry about anything. Autopilot's not friendly to mergers at all. So you know everybody's trying to merge into the right lane because there's a but it stays really close. Yeah, and I, I didn't I didn't adjust my car length, but I I just wanted to see what it would do. Like would it would it let him in this this white car over here? He's trying to merge. He's got his turn signal on. I think it's just not letting him in. It's just keeping that distance. <laughs> So I left it on as long as possible. I uh, took right. over so he could get over. Honestly, with Open Pilot's follow distance here, it's about the perfect distance to where... To let people in. It lets people in and it has time to react to them too. So you don't get that situation where someone cuts in front of you and then you have to slam on the brakes and disable it because it doesn't see them in time. Like when they're cutting in front of you as you're coming to a stop. And then here is where our curve road test comes into play. This road is, is very curvy and there's a bike lane also, which kind of complicates things. Yeah. But there are clear lane lines. Very clear, yep. No sun, autopilot's enabled. So auto, I got it set to 40 miles an hour and autopilot's going 35, 34, 36. It speeds up when it straightens out a little bit. And it, look, it's actually yeah. slowing down uh. ahead. I thought it was gonna go a lot faster, but it's very it's being very cautious. So it's slowing down to 30 miles an hour because mm. this is a tight curve. You know, it's going over the lane line as, as it sees it. It probably did cross over. I'm impressed by the fact that it's going 10 miles slower. slower. Like it really slowed down and um, and it took the curve. You know, I didn't yeah. take over. The autopilot took the curve pretty well. I mean, now it's speeding back up to almost 40 miles an hour. Hit, hit 40 miles an hour, then it slows down again. Hmm. And the bike lane's on the right, you can see. So yeah, I mean, it handled the curves a lot better than I thought. Open Pilot's like slowdown is model based. So it's actually using the vision to see, you know, the curve ahead and then you know, decelerate, but right now it's pretty uh, rudimentary. It basically just decelerates until it sees the curve end and then it resumes acceleration. You can actually see a little curvy road sign will pop up when it decides it needs to decelerate. Right here, I think it's just following your car speed, which makes it easier for me because I'm just matching the speed you're doing. Right. Um, then I think here where just the lane disappears and it's pretty tight, it yeah. it straightens out. I, it I'm not itself, sure if I crossed it, but I was definitely close to it. Right. You can see definitely not as smooth as uh, autopilot. It's a little wandery. Um, and again, that's mainly due to just one camera. So it loses a lot of vision of what's ahead of it. Vision, there. So yeah. it's, that's why I think it's more impressive just because it's using one camera compared to, you know, autopilot has so many more cameras. Yeah. And after watching this, it's kind of, you almost forget that it's essentially a cell phone. No, this is a really interesting test right here too. This is the beast that we're dealing with on this road. This is a, a median island that's like just out of nowhere. I don't know why it's there. It's got a, it's because it's holding a sign. These roads right here are super narrow. Yeah. Super narrow. And there's curbs. There's curbs on both sides. Yeah. So I and there's see a single lane line just for the island, but not the curb on the other side. So I enable autopilot right here and there's a curve coming up. I'm going 25 miles an hour, so I'm going fairly slow. I was kind of curious about this curve, too, because yeah, the, the, the lane lanes disappears. disappear. The road continues actually to the right. So I didn't know what it was going to do. It actually, wow. that did it. You know, autopilot, I was really surprised it did it. I didn't have to take over, which I was super surprised about. Now, here is where the median is coming up. The biggest thing right here was is it kind of pops out right here on the right. Like, yeah, it's very like, confusing. So I freaked out. Like, I'll right. show you. Yeah, you. Here. Right here is when I took over. Because I thought I like I was so worried that this this front left end was gonna touch. Right I there. thought I was gonna yeah. hit. I and it, I don't know if it would have or not, but like I took over because I was just like too close for comfort for me. I think the main thing is it seems like when it narrows in, it almost forces autopilot to kind of move further right here. It narrows and it wants to kind of recenter itself. And you see here, right it's there, really yeah. far left in right. the lane. It understands where the lane is, but it's 
it's having trouble very close it's having trouble reacting to how quickly the lane changes left to right and the reason it kind of stays to the left is because you can see right there it sees that curve you see that the sensor yeah. sees recognizes there's a curve there so it wants to keep its distance but right after there you're you're so close up on this curve so right. i just like took over at that point i was like i don't i don't trust that yeah. so i took over and kind of jerked it so and it's like alerting on every side of the yeah car. it was like all the sensors were going, going off like oh you're so close to the curb on both sides so you're you handled it better see than mine. my confidence level by my hands if they come up to the wheel that means i'm not confident <laughs> open pilot here is reading that left center line mainly and it's not really paying attention to the curb it's relying more on following that center line than it is following the lane it full width itself to the curb so you're definitely positioned more to the right it seems like it took it fine yeah and it did it at 25 miles an hour it did not slow down no. at all which was really impressive an autopilot could have done it i don't know how close and we i can't really tell from your camera like look i have it room. looks like you would have cleared it but and then it would have just been would have made the correction again, okay, again. to get to get back because it seems like you you can't went right when you take over is about there and i would have probably done the same thing but the way open pilot handled it it just did what i was wanting it to, you know you when you're seeing it turn exactly where you're wanting it to turn yeah. and you know it, it gave me confidence to just let it go ahead and do its thing but yeah i think this is more in a test uh to the impressiveness of I open mean, pilot more than like how because i honestly think autopilot probably would have taken it but i think i was so surprised that open pilot did it without you taking over this is kind of a test narrow roads, roads with like street parking street, street, street parking, parking is this road is all lined lined with uh, street parkers and there's also another curve coming up as an interesting curve yeah the sensors are going off like if For you the watch cars, yeah. yeah like it, it it senses the cars they're not coming up on the uh display as parked cars though not all of them you know they're none of them are coming up as hmm. you can't even see any of them i mean it shows the ones moving. they'll show the moving cars i mean it handles it pretty well yeah and as far as open pilot's concerned it's just focused on the lane it's in. It's not using any, you know, proximity sensors or anything, so it really doesn't even know those vehicles are there. Obviously, it can tell based on those vehicles the width of the lane, so that's why it kind of it stays closer to that center line. Uh -huh. Weird. Again, turn. there's like a curb that pops out right here, and then right after this curb, it curves to the right. You know, autopilot's enabled here. Here is where the road, the, the and the lane markings are very faint. Yeah. So, I took over. What got me was that curve right there, the, the very right. I thought it was going to hit my right tire. Yeah, I mean, that's a really unnatural road change, too. Curve yeah. really juts out, and then the lane, the lane shifts basically here, basically disappears. Yeah. And just imagine if there was a car coming oh, yeah. that way. You'd have to. I mean, you, to. I did not trust autopilot there at all. It just kind of scared me. I didn't have any issue, but I do think I gave some steering input i went back and looked at the the can data and it showed that i had given a steering override here if i did it was very faint yeah i didn't do much of a correction if any i i was just same as you more concerned about that inside curb probably went over the line definitely but i mean i think it's impossible not to for B. for how quickly you have to adjust yourself through yeah. there since the lanes are so they and, shift so much there i mean you you'd have to take over to really not cross that line right so we're coming up on another curve to the left and there's a parked car on the on the right hand side there's street parked cars on the right and uh, it goes going really super slow, slow. this is sure. autopilot slowing down to 13 miles an hour it's slowing down it, itself and it like detects that car ahead of it i took over right there oh yeah because it's right getting kind of close to those because i thought I was so close to the car. And, yeah. And maybe it's just me being overly cautious. I mean, at the end of the day, we're yeah. trying to test the limits of this technology in a safe way. I don't think I meant to take over. I had my hand on the wheel. I, I was just so tense that like I yeah. accidentally just kind of my, it, my it's instinct so took over. It's so sensitive to yeah. it. Right. And, and it's still impressive. Even though it slowed down, It's it figured it out. And this is where you'll see big differences in how autopilot handles something and how open pilot handles Oh yeah, it. that's right. This is... Because so, here I'm letting it go, car. and I just took over pretty early because I could tell just from how it was acting that it was confused. See, it actually it, it picks up that car yeah, it as the it. lead car and loses your car. Yeah, and you can see how for a, a simple vision system, that's a confusing situation. So one, we're coming up over a hill, so the camera loses a lot of the horizon. You know, it doesn't have as good a ground truth. You know, same as a human. It can't see anything. It's not using anything besides vision. It's not using GPS maps or HD maps or any data like that. So it was probably just going to come to a, a stop or try to stop behind that car and it would just stop there 
from my perspective, OpenPilot does 95% of what Autopilot does. It also has some benefits, like some some things that like, you know, you could pretty much enable it without any lane markings compared yeah. to Tesla, which I think Autopilot is definitely more strict about when it when which, it is available and when you can enable it. It's in a car that had to go through government regulatory approval. Yes. And so it's amazing what they're capable of doing and being totally legal, but we're just kind of trying to show what the real limitations and and prod into the the machine learning and what's going on in the background of these systems to see really what they're capable of and what they're not capable of. We're not looking for a winner and a loser. We're looking just to see how they're similar and how they're different. Yeah, the biggest difference is Tesla obviously has more cameras, more like sensors. Navigate. It uses maps. Yeah. It has Navigate on autopilot. Uh, So as far as the full self-driving, the features like that. Open pilot is technically a modification with open source software. It's a development kit. But what it can do with one camera for a thousand bucks, if you have a compatible car, it's like a no-brainer almost. Like Yeah, just, I mean, compared to the factory system, it's night and day. Both of these systems are constantly improving. We're getting new software updates constantly. You get one every month. Logan has a lot of good videos about OpenPilot on his channel. I'll link to his channel below. And then you can also follow him on Instagram. He takes some amazing photos, motorsports photography. So yeah, let us know if you guys want to see more videos like this and uh, we'll see you in the next one.